Hello, everyone, and welcome to OHSCA Interviews. I'm Vincenzo Calla, and I'm your host for today's episode. Today, I'm happy to have with me the Ontario PC candidate for York Centre, Michael Kersner. Michael is an entrepreneur currently in the technology and bioscience fields. Outside of his career, he has been recognized for his volunteer work and identified as a well-respected consensus team member, having served actively and locally in many different organizations. Michael has lived in the riding of York Centre for over 25 years with his family and is now running to be the MPP. Thank you, Michael, for your time and thank you for joining us today. It's great to be here and thanks for inviting me. We're glad to have you here. We're trying to interview a bunch of PC candidates ahead of the election. Um, it's just a few weeks away now, so we're, we're getting as many of you in as possible. And we're glad to have you here today to share your story and share why you're running. So we're going to start off the interview, as we always do, with the question and answer segment. And these questions come from the members of our high school team. So the first question comes uh, is one of the ones that I came up with and it's why did you decide that this election the 2020 the 2022 uh, provincial election is the best time to run to be the MPP for York Center well thanks for the question and I really want to thank uh, your conservative association for having me on again the, the, the last two years have been so unprecedented in our lives certainly in my generation and in your generation that uh, we've learned a lot. We've learned a lot retrospectively about ourselves. And um, for me, as somebody that really does care about my community, a place that I've lived 25 years, I felt that this was a great time to give something back. And we should be grateful as, as a country and as a province that we've made it through uh, an unprecedented period in our lives. And I think, uh, as, as I've said uh, many times to people, Premier Ford can't do it by himself. He needs, he needs people who are prepared to stand up for what is right, to stand up for a progressive conservative values and help move the province forward. So for me, even though I was never really involved uh, much in, in politics for all of my life, I felt this was a way I can give back to my community. And I thought it was a great time. Well, I mean, everybody has their own reason for running. And I think nowadays, um, the, one of the main reasons for a lot of people for running is uh, kind of the events that they've seen over the past two years and the, um, and the impacts they've had, um, obviously very fair. Um, this pandemic hit everybody in a different way and everybody has their own story and everybody should share their own story and how it's impacted them. And I think everybody has a better understanding of how things, how they want things to go forward now that um, the pandemic is, is sort of winding down in terms of uh, restrictions and mandates and all that sort of thing as we're sort of moving forward economically and as a society moving forward from it. Um, there's lots of new things coming out and being able to share those through an election. And, I'd say, and I would way. say this to you and your viewers, that if we go back through, through our time from Confederation to the present, Canada has lived through wars and depressions and recessions and previous pandemics and other crises. So if, if we as individuals who, who want to serve our, our, our province as a member of provincial parliament, as an MPP, if all we want to do is look for the finest and, and easiest and best times to run because everything is so perfect, then, then what will happen in every other time? I think it takes a mark of a, of a great group of individuals uh, this election is not about me. It's actually about my community. It's about my party. It's about my province. And to be quite honest, I think this is a great time. I, I started a, a business, as, I'll, as we'll talk about in a few minutes, in probably, again, one of the most unprecedented hard times to start a new business. W the times are what we make of it, but we also shouldn't be afraid of it. Great words there and uh, some great advice and some great thoughts there as well in terms of uh, in terms of timing of running and, and all that sort of thing. But we're going to move on to um, look, taking a closer look at this election. So um, some people say, and it was very apparent that the 
win in 2018, it was a sweeping majority of the province that uh, voted PC, but in the GTA itself was quite close. It was a good balance, but it was quite close. So how do you plan to continue the work started by the party in 2018 to make sure that there's another victory in your GT in your Toronto GTA riding and just in general, this election? It's a, it's a, it's a very good question. See, York Centre is bound by uh, uh, a riding that is actually separated almost in the middle by the old uh, Downsview Air Force Base. And so we have, unfortunately, a large divide, and I'll speak about it in, at the end, about what I think can bring this riding together. But, but the riding is distinct. It's distinct because we have many different uh, communities that call York Center home. We have an enormous Vietnamese community here. We have a large Filipino community. We have a large Italian community. We have a Greek community. We have a Jewish community. We have a Russian community. What, what I want to do and what I think what was started in 2018 is <clears throat> bridge the gap of dialogue where these communities within a community feel that they can uh, be part of something bigger than themselves. The sum of our parts, especially here in York Center, are much bigger than the, than the sum of these individual parts. And, 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 and I say there's, there's work to be done, but what's unique about York Center is we face different issues because we, we have inherently different backgrounds. I think what, what I can bring is this uh, something that, that I, I think I've learned over time. And you have to have a way of trustworthiness. You have to have a way where people will, will trust you because you're empathetic. And as I say at the doors, you know, one of the things I'm pledging is to be a good listener. But by being a good listener comes with the responsibility that you have to be prepared to take the voices with you to Queen's Park. And that's what defines our party. And, 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 and you know, I've spoken to the premier about it. And, and, I'm, and I'm hoping that, that people will see it correctly on, on election day. Well, election day is um, not too far away now. Um, at this time of this filming, it's just over a month away. By the time this is coming out, it's going to be under a month away, just a couple weeks away by the time this comes out. Um, and really, I think that uh, the PC brand uh, under Premier Ford has uh, become the personal Ford brand, if you could say, of community, of public service and working for you and listening. Um, and that's something that uh, Premier Ford's late brother, Rob Ford, had uh, that Doug Ford has that um, his nephew who's even running in the election has and that every one of you has sort of adapted to we talked about that with Minister Khalid Rashid a couple weeks ago uh, about a month ago now uh, talking about listening to Ontarians and bringing that forward and that's something that you brought forward too well that you mentioned and um, really as well um, listening to everybody in your community not everybody will agree I mean, you're not going to, if you win, you won't win with 100% of the riding. We can only hope, but you won't because everybody has their own ideas. But it's about listening to everybody and adapting to everybody and hearing what everybody has it, to it, say. It, it, it is. And, and, and what drew me, I've, I've known Premier Ford for, I don't know, about six or seven years, just I think 2017. Uh, but whether it's the premier, whether it was his late brother, whether it's his nephew who's running in an adjoining riding to me to the West, they, they define something that I hold dear. And this is the concept of service over self. And I would say to, to you and your fellow students and your listeners that there is, there is nothing except good that can come out of willing to serve your community. Uh, and, 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 and the Fords are, are customer-centric focused. This is something that's important. Everything, everything for me, it's about listening to, to the residents. I can tell you something else. Uh, people, when I was asked to be a candidate, and it was, it's been the greatest honor of my life, uh, Premier Ford reminded me that there's very few people in totality that serve as a candidate or get elected in, in our history of Canada. It, it is itself such a great honor and I hold it dear. But when we've gone to the doors, we, we've knocked on almost 10,000 doors. The number is incredible. But I can tell you 
the incredible conversations we have had, the streets become part of the fabric of your enthusiasm for being a candidate. You will remember a vignette, you will remember an issue, a story, a conversation, and not all of them, you're right, not all of them are positive. But uh, to me, uh, uh, you know, it's incredible. And we're only getting started. You know, the, the, the enthusiasm for me, and I was out at the doors today, just before the rain. Uh, I have to tell you, it's, for me, it's like, it's, it's infectious. I, I think the mark of candidates today is you have to have this in, infectiousness of wanting to go to a door and engage people. I stop people on the street. I probably caused a few accidents that were close because I pulled people and I've asked them to lower their window and chat. And, and to me, I love it. Well, I mean, I think that uh, it's important to have those conversations and uh, we'll go on to serving your community and serving some people uh, if you are elected, but it's important to listen to the people of your community and uh, important to, to make yourself known out there. I mean, you wanna serve them for the next four years. Uh, if you want them to vote for you, they, I mean, it's very fairly have the right to know who you are and talk to you and have a conversation and make their her and their their voices heard. You're running to make their voices heard. So people want to listen to that. So um, we're going to go into the next part, which is uh, from Vasu and Ajax. And he wants to ask, how will your experience in the technology and bioscience fields help you represent the constituents of York Center? And with this experience, do you have any plans to make York Center a better place to live if elected? And what are those plans? <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the plans are something that's personal to me. In the middle of the pandemic, I co-founded with a great friend of mine, a DNA uh, testing, a genetic DNA testing company to help people understand the risks of drug compatibility. What, what this taught me with no science experience and no background in, in, in medical, and I self-taught as an entrepreneur something that I think answers the question. And that is technology, how we see it today is evolving at such a rapid pace that if we can harness the technology and science, if we can find a way of leveraging it from our hospitals to our schools, to something that I wanna see happen in York Center, which will be a center of innovation. We have 500 acres, as I mentioned earlier in the Downsview lands uh, where the old CFB Downsview was with the runway that will be redeveloped on a 20 year project. You know, I, I'm already out of the gate saying, we need a center of innovation. We need a place that when you graduate, we're in Ottawa or anywhere in the province, there's, there's a center for you to explore ingenuity and science and technology and entrepreneurism that, that this to me is incredible. And as the premier knows, and, I, and I've spoken to him about it, you know, we, we, can do, we can do more with less by applying technology and science efficiently. And it's not just in the hospitals, it's in, it's in the cars that we build, it's in the, the buildings we create. So I am a great fan of explaining that one of the marks I wanna make and do it locally is introduce a, a, a way of moving forward with technology, embracing it and not having it uh, uh, as what was done in the 13 years or so, nitpicked and regulated. We, we have to have a faster approach so that you in your schools and in your colleges and universities have a fair opportunity to benefit from technology. Well, those are all uh, big things. And I mean, I know that myself going into, into university, um, a lot of my peers are going into technology fields and studying technology. Um, lots of people studying uh, computer science and that sort of things, uh, technological um, uh, programs and such. And there's going to be a lot of people who obviously, uh, if you're going to university to learn about this, you obviously will want a job about this. So you got to create those opportunities. But it's, and, it's, it's everything that it represents, yeah. whether we are, whether we are buying, uh, hopefully an electric car in the future, whether we're doing something in our homes, deploying the new technology, it, it, it is advancing your generation, my children's generation, which is the same as, as your chapter will benefit from it. 
the challenge for government today is how can we do something that we're not good at? That Premier Ford is, has changed the mindset, the paradigm shift of making things happen. And what strikes me about Premier Ford and his cabinet uh, is that they are driven to make things happen. He coins the phrase when, we, when, when he's met the candidates, it's build, build, build. It's about being positive. Tell me how you're gonna do it. Don't tell me how, how it can't be done. And when you look at this mentality of a person with his incredible service to his community through generations in his own family, I align myself with this and I do so, you know, very naturally. Well, especially, I mean, uh, I don't want to spend too much longer on this because we do have another uh, question or two that we would like to get to. But it, it really is like what you said, it's about the future and it's about everything that we'll know going forward. So the fourth question is, um, what is an issue that you would like to bring forward and find solutions to if elected? I know you already talked in your previous question about something you would like to get done, but uh, maybe an issue you've noticed that you would like to maybe highlight that maybe not everybody's talking about just yet. Well, the, this whole concept of when, when you talk about rebuilding a community uh, from, from what we inherited in 2018. The job can't be done in four years. We, and we've talked about it. I don't think there's a singular issue. Technology and science and the deployment of it for, for our schools and our hospitals is important. But what, what, what I feel is an issue that is more humanistic to it is bringing the community together. And, and some ridings in where you are in Ottawa or in Ajax or, or other places in Ontario are more singular in terms of the diversity. I think, I think what's important to me personally as a community advocate and activist is bringing people together. Um, most people embrace this because they feel that they're part of something great when offered the opportunity. We, we want to build a beautiful community center in our riding that will involve the three partnerships, the partnership of, uh, of uh, the federal government, the provincial government, the municipal government. We, we want to see more houses built. We want to have more uh, infrastructure built, as I said, so we can see the Downsview lands completed. But it all comes back to the central concept of bringing people together. And when we have this enormous diversity, I think through dialogue and in and, and an effort to have programs to, to, to encourage people that, that this is something so unique. This is something I'm going to champion. And, and for me, I'm, I'm, I'm excited by it. Well, definitely. And I mean, like you mentioned, there's not just one issue, there's plenty of issues. And and um, those are really good ideas, just sort of bringing forward that community and building that community, especially you mentioned housing right now. Um, the housing issue is an issue that all levels of government are trying to tackle and um, uh, prices of houses, prices of uh, prices of renting houses, uh, buying houses. Are just it, 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 it is prohibitive. Mm -hmm. It is prohibitive for many reasons because of the speculation that came in from people buying up our properties abroad by, uh, by the cost of construction that has gone out of control. And most recently, the supply crisis of materials. So when you add everything together, right now I have three children in the house. I don't even have a plan as to what would be their step one. So, so to me, uh, with a lot of people in our riding, over 100,000 people, we have to find a solution on the housing. It's going to be hard, but what we have going is, again, the redevelopment of the Downsview lands uh, that Bombardier sold 500 acres of lands, opportunities for 20,000 housing units in the next uh, 10 to 15 years, and they have to be affordable. But I think if you have a, an, a, a, a if, you, if you agree with me that you have to have a place to live, to work, and to play, and it has to be affordable here in our urban center. It's a challenge, but it's not insurmountable. And it's not something impossible. You just have to have the right idea and the right mindset and, and think about people and think about the struggles that people are going through to find houses and think about the good that you can do. 
So we're going to move on to advice for the next generation where we talk about youth involvement in politics more. This is a small question that we ask to everybody that comes on our show. So the question is, what do you think young high school conservatives can do in order to get more politically active? And one piece of advice that you would like to give them. Well, my advice is, uh, is don't be afraid. Uh, you know, fear itself tells us that uh, there's never a good time to get involved because, the, because we, we, we have a grown accustomed to the fact that, that uh, it is hard to make a difference. I think your role is critical. I think this is the best time for, for you and your colleagues to be part of a system because you will come across candidates that are enthusiastic, that are positive, that really want to do good for goodness sake. Uh, and, and it's an exciting part to be part of a journey. Uh, and, and we spoke about it just before we went on air. You've got a phenomenal uh, minister in, in Ottawa, Nepean. Uh, I, I think there are great candidates of the party all over. And, and we, can't, we can't be scared to help make change. We can't be scared that our role will be insignificant. In fact, the smallest contribution we make by a door knock, by a call, by staffing uh, an office during a campaign can be unbelievably important. So for me as a first time candidate, amazingly excited, I can tell you this defines all ages. But if I had my chance, I would have started when I was your age. <laughs> Well, I mean, campaigns, like you said, are a place for everybody, whether you want to get involved just one night a week, um, just door knocking or making a phone call or stuffing envelopes, or whether you want to be out there on the doors and on the phones every single night of the week leading into the election. Um, that's up to you and you can do whatever you want. Nothing's stopping you. We have great candidates in almost every riding. We will have great candidates in every riding. Um, just get involved and even get involved in whatever you want to get involved in. So that's it. Thank you, Michael, so much for your time today. We really appreciate you, appreciate you being with us. We wish you well in the future. So that's it. We hope you enjoyed today's interview. Look for more videos coming soon. Make sure to follow our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok accounts at Ontario HS Cons for info about our next interview and for more great content. Look at our website, OntarioHSConservatives.org to learn more about, more about us, see our projects, and for more great content. YouTube viewers like this video, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss a video. Podcast listeners, follow us and stay updated with new episodes. We hope to see you all soon. Thank you.